Hello, everyone, uh, and welcome. Today, we're going to be talking with uh, Sarah Nunez. So, uh, Sarah is a very, very dynamic and a very energetic personality, and you will realize that as we start speaking to Sarah, and she does uh, a lot of uh, work and a lot of uh, social causes as well. So, she supports a lot of social causes, and she's a project management expert. So, I don't want to uh, give an introduction of Sarah, so I'll probably uh, firstly, Sarah, I just want to say thank you for um, taking the time to talk to us. I think it's, uh, I'm very grateful that you decided to do that. But um, I want to begin by uh, just asking a little bit about yourself, Sarah. So can you just tell us who you are, what you do, and maybe give us a little bit of your journey and, uh, you know, your journey so far in your career, Sarah, please. Well, first of all, thank you so much for inviting me. I just want to send a beautiful heart to all the thank audience uh, beyond anything. I think we all feel like we are closer to each other than ever. So whatever this is going, I want you to think about uh, yourself, your story, <clears throat> how do you get here, and uh, the things that you are doing today to impact each of us and improve the way that we're doing things today. So with that, I think I can share with you um, who I am and you know, where am I going? Where is my journey going or you know, taking me? So I was born and raised in Barranquilla, Colombia, South America. Mm -hmm. I came to the United States uh, 30 years ago with a dream to succeed. And uh, I think that I can say today that I reached my dream and there's many more dreams than now I'm defining for the next stage of my life. So uh, I finished business in um, college education. I've been studying leadership, talent management, and obviously mm -hmm. project portfolio management as the core of what I do. Um, and now with the innovation and, and the acceleration to the digital transformation that we all have to undertake, I'm posting and I'm learning a lot about artificial intelligence, virtual reality, internet of things and all the emerging technology that we have available to really drive that transformation with the objective to improve our quality of life as human beings. So uh, that's been my journey all along. I've been working with global organizations like AT&T, UBS, uh, Intel, Verizon and Honeywell. And um, you know at the same time I've been doing advisory work with uh, global organizations around the world on how do we implement the artificial intelligence strategy with purpose and with a sense of responsibility. Uh, as I said, because the path of artificial intelligence can take us to two places. One, to really improve the quality of life and really do everything that we can to continue advising as humanity. But it can also bring a lot of risk if we don't do it right. So I think I'm kind of driving that awareness and the responsibility that we all have as professionals to ensure that this strategy is implemented with a sense of responsibility. So I think that's been my journey. That's where, that's where I am right now. And I'm really, really excited here sharing with you my knowledge and my experience and hopefully I have the opportunity to hear yours. Definitely, uh, Sarah. So this was very, very uh, useful, Sarah, and um, uh, thank you. Uh, so, Sarah, you said something about um, a project and portfolio management. So, uh, and and as far as I've known you, you you've um, been an expert in that space. And uh, you know, I think I look up to you, and I remember coming and asking you a lot of questions about project management, portfolio management, program management, and a lot of things like that. And uh, so, can you talk to us a little bit about what what is the essence of project and portfolio management, and um, uh, and you know maybe a little bit about what what makes someone successful in that space, uh, Sarah? Please. Right. So uh, I think um, you know with the business background, uh, thirty years ago, I was very very fortunate to be introduced to the hmm. project management professional certification. And uh, with that, and uh, I think uh, the door open, endless opportunity for me to build my career, to be honest, but at the same time to see the power of this discipline mm. and what it brings to organizations. So I, I'm going to tell you, portfolio management is, is the simplest, in the simplest meaning of it, 
is taking the strategy, which you could be in it, it is a, just a sentence that a company may have. Hey, we're becoming the number one provider of Internet of Things. Mm -hmm. That could be mm -hmm. the strategy, right? Or maybe what uh, Coca-Cola did once, it says, we want everybody in the world to have taste what Coca-Cola is all about. Mm -hmm. Or IBM, we want everybody to have a computer in front of them and look where we are, right? That yes. vision, that strategy really came to true with many other organizations joining that. So that is the strategy, but portfolio management take that statement and really cascade it in a way that says, what is the investment that we need to create mm -hmm. product services and to run an operation in a most effective manner so we can make that strategy happen for our customers, right? So mm -hmm. when you look at the investment and then you start selecting the right projects to work on and working with a team to develop those products or to improve those business process, that's mm -hmm. where we see the execution of the strategy happening. And that is project management. And with mm -hmm. project management, there is a magic. And you know, and I think there, I'm saying there is a magic because there is one. Uh, if I go back in 30 years ago, it was all about the processes and the pin book and all these procedures and template. Well, I'm gonna tell you now anymore, uh, project management is the magic to bring us together, to mm -hmm. really see each of you in the organization as complementary factors and components for us to deliver the excellent products and services to our customers and obviously to the organization that we work on. So we are the enablers of that business result that become as an outcome of what we do. So project management is really the connectors, it's bringing our, our minds together for us to work and develop and create something great for our customers and accelerate results. So if you look at that definition, you know, that tell you, and, and I'm a little bit passionate when I talk about it because it's connected with my purpose in life. My purpose in life is really to eliminate poverty because I don't believe anybody deserves that. And to be honest, poverty is not just the people that you can visualize don't even have food to eat. It could be between us. We are three paycheck away from poverty, guys. If we don't have that paycheck, we won't be able to pay our rent. We won't be able to bring food to the table. And the worst part is we will not have health care. And what will happen with us? So I think project management, when you look at that, is really the enabler to drive the economy and to, to ensure that our economy is performing the way that we need. So products and services are sold to people who have the power to buy. Mm -hmm. Therefore, we have a job. So yes, project management and portfolio management execute the strategy of the company, but at the same time, ensure that we perform well. So we maintain all these indicators to the top. We create job opportunities and we hopefully eliminate poverty. So that's mm -hmm. kind of the connection of why I'm so passionate about project portfolio management, because anytime I come to an organization, and I made the process better, I know we're gonna deliver faster and better to our customer. And that will impact each of us and the way that we live. Interesting. It's um, it's very interesting you say that, uh, Sarah. I mean, uh, I've, of course, you know, we know what project management is, but I've never thought about it as this way. I mean, we just know that, okay, you bring a bunch of developers, you probably bring a bunch of business analysts, you know, scrum masters maybe, and, you know, folks from the business, folks from the tech team, folks from the support team. But I never thought about it the way uh, you have said it. I mean, I, I don't think I can even explain it uh, uh, as, as well as you've done. This is uh, brilliant, uh, Sarah, and this is why... Uh, I have come to you so many times with uh, questions on uh, project management and uh, uh, stuff like that, uh, Sarah. So uh, another question as a follow-up to this, uh, Sarah, is uh, in the project and portfolio and program management uh, space, uh, what are the qualities someone should have or what would make anyone successful in that space, uh, Sarah? Yeah, so uh, the formal answer, you know, if you were to do your PMP test tomorrow, mm -hmm. Uh, what is required of you? You have to have the technical knowledge of the business that you are in. So mm -hmm. what I mean, technical knowledge is everything. 
what is the products and services that company is serving, right? Who are your customers? How are your company operates? So all the technicality required for you to be able to do your job is one of the key components that is required as a project manager. The second one is really leadership. You have to be able to have the components to motivate people, visualize where we're going and really take the team with you and move forward. And you have to be able to do the work with the team if you need to do the work with the team because that motivation and that new way of leadership include the situational aspect of how you as a project manager needs to operate to get to the goal that you're expecting. So, uh, and then the last one is the business knowledge. You know, you definitely need to know in what space we are. And when I talk about the economy and go that deep, you know, I will challenge everybody in this audience, if you're managing a project, answer that question, how this project is gonna move the needle in the company I'm working for, how this project is gonna move the needle in the industry that we're working on, and how this project is gonna move the needle in the global or GDP, the gross domestic product is a measurement of the economy for the world, not only the country you work for, but they also the world in itself. So I think as leaders in project management, you gotta be mm -hmm. able to know, you know, how do you move the needle in the economy with this initiative that you're working on? It's, in, it's critical. So once again, three components, technical knowledge, second leadership, and third will be your business knowledge. Interesting, yeah, and uh, that, that's, it's, uh, it's so deep you say that, uh, Sarah, because I think uh, I've heard a lot of folks say that, you know, I'm working on this project because I have the requirements, and I think you've gone, you've peeled that layer so well, and, you know, said that, see, it's not just about, you know, it's not just about just getting requirements. I mean, it's a lot deeper than uh, than just having you know requirements written on a sheet of paper. I think that's uh, it's it's an amazing uh, thought, Sarah. Thank you. Sure. So, uh, Sarah, I want to touch upon a slightly different uh, topic. Uh, Sarah is on. You mentioned you know a lot of social causes, and as far as I've known you, you've worked on a lot of social causes, and that's one of the reasons I really respect you as a professional. Of course, even otherwise, I think professionally you're great, but you know the fact that you do a lot of um, uh, social work and you help a lot of social causes. So, can can you tell us a little bit about the social causes that you work on, and you know how how they make a difference, uh, Sarah? Please. Yeah, I know. Thank you for that question, because maybe that's the second action item I'm going to give your audience is uh, think about how you pay forward, because I know I can assure you that each of us has somebody in our life that push us forward. And I want you to start pushing others forward because that's basically necessary for us to pay the universe all the greatness that we have mm -hmm. as human. So, um, you know, I have to tell you my story started when I was nine years old and uh, I saw the first American person in my country, which has blue eyes, obviously, and he was very white. And you know what, honestly, with this color, it was like, oh my God, who is this guy? He looked like Santa Claus. And, uh, and uh, you know, I run to him and uh, I, my mom says he's an American and he speaks English and I couldn't wait to hear the first word in English. And he says, beautiful. And I was like, beautiful, oh my God. And I wanted to repeat that word. And then he says, and if you believe, that's the second word, if you believe that you can remember those two words, he said that in Spanish, obviously beautiful and believe Santa Claus will come to your house. And I doubted it because he never did in the past. So why he's gonna come now if I'm gonna remember these two words? So that guy really saw on me something and you know, he fought to, with my mother to eventually pay for my education because my mother is in a belief that we have to work for what we get. So the condition was for him to give me a job when I was nine and pay for my education and learn English beyond my, you know, education, basic education. So he believed in me and I think he gave me that chance and I have to tell you, I own that guy, the success I had in my life. And not only that, the fact that we eliminated poverty in my whole family and now we're serving others. I have a foundation, I have adopted 25 professionals like me 
and I'm coaching them, mentoring them so they can create jobs and we can eliminate poverty. Uh, not only in Colombia or Latin America, but I basically undertake that anywhere where I can possibly make an impact. So Dream to Succeed Foundation is now serving the professionals that are looking for a job or wants to create jobs so we can help each other forward. So I think that's, that's basically what I've been doing. And I have to say, anytime I have an opportunity to share with audience, mm -hmm. anything that I have learned, I'm passing on to you something, a gift that I know that you will be able to continue passing to others. So thank you in event for doing that because that's the intention of giving forward. Well, thank you, Sarah. I think uh, it's it's just great uh, what you do, and I I honestly did not know this story, and I'm I'm even more impressed uh, after listening to this uh, to the story. This is uh, it's beautiful, uh, Sarah, and uh, uh, I think uh, you know folks who are watching, if you can uh, uh, if you can just go to the link and you know do your best to help the foundation. I think it'll be it'll be great, or even if not anything, just spread uh, spread awareness about it would be would be fantastic. So, uh, Sarah, I think, uh, you know, off late with so many issues happening in the world and uh, stuff like that, have you seen an increased awareness? So have you seen the, you know, the up and coming generations uh, to be more aware of, uh, of social causes and, you know, more willing to help? Have you, have you seen anything? I mean, what, what is a trend that you've seen within um, the space that you're in when it comes to social causes and stuff like that, Sarah? Yeah, you know what I think uh, before the pandemic, I remember anytime I went to a training session or I was sharing with the project managers and the team and my community of experts like you, I always made emphasis on the human factor. How do we mm -hmm. treat each other? How do we help each other? How do we support each other as human? Because mm -hmm. I felt that somehow we were forgetting who we are. We are humans and yeah, yes. we can work 24 hours a day, but we're going to burn out. Hello, we need to sleep. True. And you know, if, and if we go too aggressive and then push each other's envelope, uh, that's not going to create a good environment to work on. And it's going to impact our stress level and eventually it's going to impact our yes. health. So we are human. And I remember talking so much about the people factor after COVID or oh, not during COVID because we start, we're still in the crisis. And with races, crisis also activating everywhere and people being a little bit more conscious of what the differences are between mm -hmm. us. I think there is a great, great emphasis on what I see is an activation of giving, giving forward, paying mm -hmm. forward, right? And, and being involved on in social um, and um, activities like we're doing here, nonprofit, where we are really focusing on helping each other. I attended many training sessions that were given for free, and it kept my mind very busy during the pandemic where we couldn't even go outside. Mm -hmm. uh, so many universities, companies, LinkedIn, you know, all the media was really there giving training and development for free. So I hope you took the opportunity to learn and to develop yourself. I also saw an emphasis on some organization and people who have been very successful that were willing to give money to ensure that, hey, we solve for the problem. We go do research really fast and furious. We create vaccine. We do this. So all this stuff that the, the people have been doing is showing that, yes, we care for each other. And maybe people that may not be rich, they can just, pick up the phone and say, hello, how you doing? So I think that was really cool, you know, to see each other caring for each other mm -hmm. virtually, you know, in any way. So that was pretty cool. But beyond all of that, I think the pandemic also activated something in each of us. It, it activated that moment of meditation and evaluating what we had done up to this point and what can we do better in the future right? So it gives us the time and a space to meditate and to really think mm -hmm. about how do we adjust, right, to be a better father, a better mother, a better sister. Uh, so I think that's, that was very important. The pandemic not only gave us a chance to give and to pay forward, but it also gave us a chance to pay to ourselves because now we, we, we should be able to 
really set a different path where we know what our priorities as human, right? Where do we need to focus our attention going forward and how smart we have to be going forward to do our job. That's, that's amazing, uh, Sarah. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's very philosophical and very deep uh, what you say. I mean, it, it'll, I guess I have to listen to that four or five times to even completely understand the essence of, uh, of, of what you're saying. It, it's, it's amazing. And uh, so, Sarah, I have a lot of questions for you, but I also want to be respectful of your time because I understand you're a very busy person. So I have one last question uh, for you, Sarah, is um, do you have any advice uh, for people who are getting into tech, who are getting into maybe AI or machine learning or, you know, getting into project management and stuff like that? And uh, most specifically for uh, one of the causes that I support very strongly is women in technology. So do you, do you have any advice for either of these groups or both of these groups? And what is your advice, uh, Sarah? Yeah, I think first of all, uh, artificial intelligence and all these emerging technology that we start thinking about or even hearing about is creating new knowledge. So I advise you, more than anything is go and do your, your research. Get familiar with the topic, understand what artificial intelligence is in the first place. Mm -hmm. And start thinking about, hey, how can we start bringing that to the organization I work for? Uh, get used to that vocabulary, I think, and start thinking or creating a movement, wherever you work, on how we can utilize this to create a better future for all of us. So I encourage you, to look for the new knowledge that is being created with this emerging technology, okay? That's the most important thing. Now, what advice do I have for you from this person? I have to tell you, there is three words that identify who I am, and I'm gonna share them with you because that's my advice to you. Um, you know, I usually use determination as the first one because I'm very focused on what I'm gonna get to. It's that, important yes. that as a person in, in, you know, a professional in the technology world, you visualize that future. Mm -hmm. What this is going to do, what this transformation, what this change is going to do to the organization, visualize that very clearly and be determined to deliver it because the organization is counting on you and only the organization, your family and your peers around the world. Everybody's counting on you because remember you moved the needle, right? that really improve society and who we are as human. So be determined and do the best you can. The second one is integrity. Do the right thing, no matter who's watching. No matter who's watching, do the right thing. And think about the organization that you work for as a great partner, as a great partner because you are depending on them, but they also depending on you. And most importantly, our customers, that basically is us, are depending on ourselves, right? Yeah. On yourself as a professional. So it is important to look at that. And the last one is love what you do. If you don't love what you do, you're in the wrong place. Love what you do and love the people around you. I think, and don't be afraid to say, I love you. Uh, you know, usually, usually companies rules or people feel intimidated by that word, but no, we are human and it's okay for us to love each other. And you know, love is the only arm or bullet that will kill all the neg negativity that we don't need in this world. So love what you do, love the people that work with you, love the people that live with you, love the people that you see around. Thank you, Sarah. Again, I mean, it's just uh, what you say is so deep and needs so much of uh, thought because it's extremely philosophical and uh, there's, there's so much meaning and value in uh, what you say, Sarah. I think it's, it's, uh, it's, it's brilliant. So, uh, Sarah, I... You know, I promised it's going to be a short conversation. It's gone a little more than we expected it to, but it's just, uh, you know, I've learned so much in this conversation. So I want to say thank you. And 
I actually have a lot of follow-up questions for you, so I will probably set up some more time, uh, you know, later for us to for us to talk again. But today, I want to be respectful of your time, so I just want to say thank you for taking the time, uh, Sarah, to uh, talk to all of us, and uh, I'm extremely grateful for your time, Sarah.